Okay, the next presentation is going to be pretty awesome. Um, we've talked about designing applications. We've talked about how to place your information on screen. Now the question is, what happens if the screen is really, really small? How do you go about doing mobile applications? So I'd like to ask Ruben to come up and tell us a little bit about it. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ruben Gonçalves. And as most people in our systems know, I like to live on the edge. Um, so that's why I work in the expert services in the out systems. In this session, we are going to talk about mobility. And I would like to ask you to think what mobility is. When preparing this presentation, I went to the dictionary to understand what was the meaning. And the, in the dictionary, it was saying that it was the ability to move physically. However, in this session, it will, be, it will have a different meaning. It will mean bridge. Like Paul said yesterday, mobility will be the bridge between your record system and real life. It will be ability to take your systems to the field. There are people who say go mobile just because it's trendy, just because everyone is doing that now. But we should know and ask why. Why? Why is it important? Why must we go mobile? Um, a disclaimer. Before I continue, uh, I have to tell you that 76% 70, of all statistics are actually made up. So since all of those are made up, I actually had to make up some as well. So I would say that 125% of all executives have smartphones. Which one of you, for example, has more than one smartphone? I see a couple of hands there. so. I can see that it's 25%. Another thing is 50% of US market share are nowadays smartphones. And this was a number of February 2012. So nowadays, this number is much higher. One billion. One billion is the number of smartphones to be shipped this year alone, worldwide. One in five U.S. companies say they will provide tablets for their employees. Examples of companies who have already done that are Barclays, the bank, and United Airlines. So pilots nowadays no longer use uh, paper maps nor paper books, which can be really good. So now that we know why it's important to go mobile, we, know, we have to know how can we go. There are, in today's technology, there are plenty of ways of doing it, of creating mobile applications. However, which one is the most appropriate solution for your application? Which one is the one that you should choose when picking a, a technology? First of all, native. I guess that most of you know what native applications are, but I'm going to explain anyway. So native applications, are applications that are coded in a specific language to run only in a specific platform. They are highly optimized for that platform. The first advantage of actually creating uh, native applications is that you get to go to the app stores with all the visibility that it brings. Because as you know, nowadays we live in an app, cultural, app culture. And people want apps, and they know where to find them in the stores. Another advantage is taking the hardware features, uh, using the hardware features, such as using your application offline. So this example, Ultralingua, this application, allows you to translate between languages. And you simply download the language that you want to translate between. And from that moment on, you, start, you can start using it offline. 
Another good example, and a very well-known example, is Angry Birds. By going native, they were able to take full advantage of hardware uh, and enable them to create a smooth application with awesome visual effects. However, as in everything in life, there is a dark side. And what is the dark side of native apps? First of all, it's hard to build. I don't know if you know this, uh, this tool, but this tool is Xcode. It's used to build native iOS applications. And I can tell you from personal experience that it is painful, very painful to use. Another disadvantage of native apps is that you have to go through the approval process, which sometimes can take weeks to months, and sometimes it's not clear why they are approved or rejected. Another disadvantage is you rely on the users to actually update your application. So if, if the user chooses or ignores the updates, your application just runs outdated in their, mobile, in their phones. And this one is the worst part. Each time you want to deploy to a new platform, you'll have to build from scratch a native app. There are other ways to, do, to create apps. And another way to do, to do is by creating hybrid apps. Hybrid apps are apps that run, are apps that run your web application. So your web application runs in a thin native shell, allowing you to use features from the phone, for example. The first advantage is, of course, you can use better tools to create your applications. Then you can use platforms like PhoneGap Build to create multiple applications for different plat platforms simultaneously in the cloud. You can still use the hardware features as the camera or the software features as the phone book, just like in native and you no longer rely on the user for updates. Since it's a web app, from the moment that you publish a new version, the next user access will start using that new version. And above all, you still get to go to the app stores with all the visibility that it brings. However, like before, there's a dark side. And what's the dark side of hybrid apps? First of all, you still have to go through the approval process. You still have to wait for it to get published. And like I told you before, it can take time. Another thing is, even if it's easier to create for multiple platforms with platforms like PhoneGap Build, you still have to test your application in each device that you want the users to, or that you think that the users will use. Finally, we can go web. We can create web applications. And as you know, web applications will be accessed by the browsers uh, in the phones of the users. So they run on the, on the server, and you are going to see the advantages now. First of all, like before, you can use better tools to create them. Second, you no longer rely on any approval process. You get your app ready, and from that moment on, you can just publish it and start marketing it. You don't rely on the user for updating. And as you all know, browsers nowadays are more and more advanced in mobile phones. And they, unlike the operating systems, they follow standards. So it's easier to deploy for all of the devices. However, there's a less brighter side in web applications. And the first thing, and this one is the most, probably the most important, is you don't get to go to the App Store. And as I told you before, this can be a problem. However, I'm going to show you a little bit later, there are ways to work around this. Another thing, you can use a couple of features of the, of the phone, but most of the features you can't use. You can't use the microphone. You can't use this, all of the sensors that the device has. So keep in mind, 
depending on what you are trying to achieve, you should choose the technology accordingly. Independently on the technology, however, you have to do a couple of things in order to make it great. And this, by making it great, it will be what you, it will make your, your application a success. First thing, you should minimize input. As you know, inputting a lot of data in smartphones is hard and time consuming. This will lead to users' frustration and at some point just giving up using your application. And since examples are better than actually just being here talking to you, I'm going to show you an example. Give me just a moment. Well, I... right. Yes. Okay. Now, so imagine that you wanted to create uh, an application for the, um, the speakers of this session. And the speakers would have to tell, sorry, would have to tell, for example, how many people are in the room. So they would have to come here and write, I would say, about 50. Oh, I have to change keyboard, about 50. Uh, are you sleeping? Are you OK? Uh, okay, I see. I, okay, I'm going to put okay. And I'm using slides. Slides, it's hard to, to click, and demos. Okay. So you see that this simple operation was hard because I'm on a device that it's not easy to, to input a lot of data. But how could we improve this? By simply asking the user, how many people are in the audience? Oh, that's it. Um, 20, more than 50. And I'm going to ignore your answers. I'm just going to say you are in ecstasy. And of course, I'm using, mm, I'm using slides and demos. Yeah, send a survey. And that's it. Something as simple as this will actually enable your user to have a much better experience using the application. However, you notice that, um, can we go back to the cameras? <laughs> Sorry. Um, you notice that the first application, besides uh, requesting a lot of input, also had some problems. And things looked like they were without space. So like uh, Marco and Sarah referenced, things were cluttered. And cluttering is especially important in mobile. Why? Because in mobile, space is precious and fingers are fat. If things are too close, people are going to click into things or more things at once without wanting. And it will make that experience really hard and tiring. So like Marco said, you, sh you don't want your users to get fat, so you should make their life easier. Like before, it's e just easier to show you an example. Okay, so let's go to our application. Now let's go to an application that in which I would like to check who is in the room. And in this application, I'm just going to do a check if that person is in the room. So without having any notion that it was, this was for mobile, the person who built this, me, um, actually committed some mistakes. So oh, it would be important for the people, to, for the person that is on the stage to know the email and phone, and then only then check the presence like this. Uh, however, who am I checking the presence when I scroll to the right? So like Mark said, it's easy and cheap to do vertical scrolls, but horizontal scrolls on mobile is going to break completely the user experience. So how could we improve this? Simply by just showing, just showing the information that the, the, the speaker needs. So I need to know the name of the person, and I just need to check if the person is in the room. And if that person is in the room, I just check his name. If it's not, I just uncheck. So with this simple change, I can just 
pretty much simplify the, the, the life of the user of the application and make it have a much better experience. Okay, as you n noticed, sorry, I lost this camera. And as you noticed, the first application was suffering from one, one thing, which, uh, which was the lack of use case. So the person who built the first application didn't understand what was the use case for that application. And the use case, as I shown you, was just to check right here on the, on the presentation which person, which people was here, which one were here. And this brings us to use cases. So when creating a mobile application, the first thing that you should do is to pick the right use cases for mobile. And these can make the difference from, di from day to night. And the golden rule in, in the use cases is that less and simpler. And what do I mean with this? When you are creating a mobile application, uh, you shouldn't try to include all of the features that you have on your website. You should only try to include the features that make sense on that application. A good example. I'm going, I'm going now to tell you a good example. Before that, I'm, I would like to give you some context. In the US, people use checks a lot. I'm not sure if there's any, uh, any person here from the US that can confirm that. Yeah, there are, so you can just ask them. Um, they use checks for everything and for nothing. So you have checks at every moment. So when Chase Bank, a couple of years ago, were to create a mobile application, they started to think what were the use cases that they could implement. And they actually came up with a very interesting use case. The ability to deposit your check with your application. So you, see, you receive a check, you simply grab your mobile application, you take it a photo, and the check gets deposited. You don't need to go to the bank, nor, nor everything, nor anything. This small feature actually made this application a huge success. A couple of years forward, nowadays, every bank in the United States has this feature because it became a must. However, you might start saying like, oh, but we don't have time to, to, to build a mobile application, a mobile specific application, uh, it's too costly. Yes, it's true. And you, can, you have another approach. You have responsive web design. Can you tell me, raise your hand, if you know what responsive web design is? Okay, I see some hands, I would say about 25% only. So, responsive web design is a design technique to uh, make your, to create websites, to create sites that adapt their, its layout to the screen of the device. Okay, so you can see on this example, that depending on the size of the, of the, of the device, the page starts uh, changing. And it's almost magical. And we can see, for example, in the community that it is responsive. Let me just show you really quick. Can you, sorry. Okay. So as you can see, and this, this actually has a fairly strange size. So um, the community site has seen on iPad mini looks like this. Well, if we go to an iPhone 5, for example, we'll be looking like this. So things that were side by side became suddenly stacked up. And this is great for using, when, when, uh, for using in, in content websites, for example, in a, news, in, a, in a website of a newspaper. This is great because all of your content adapts to the size of the screen. However, like Paul said yesterday, uh, 
it's not perfect and you should only apply it when it makes sense. One of the problems is that even one of the, um, one of the creators of this concept, so Ethan Marktoat, he said that uh, responsive web design isn't intended to replace mobile web applications. And why is that? First of all, performance. So responsive web design solves half of the problem. So it solves the problem of the size. However, with the mobility, mobile devices, is not just a small screen. It's a behavior. You are on the walk. You are not connected to a landline. You are on 3G or on 4G, but you are on the walk. So your signal might not be that good. And this makes that if you, are ju if you just use a responsive web design in its simplest form, you are just going to end up with a page that takes 15 seconds to load because it's too big. It has too many things. While on a mobile optimized page, it's, it is much faster because you are just showing the right use cases, the use cases that matter to the user when it's using through the mobile phone. So that brings us to designing pages or designing applications for mobile. One of the things that we should try to avoid at all costs when creating pages or con when creating applications to mobile devices is that we shouldn't mimic native apps at all costs. Users will understand that the, the application, although it looks like a native app, doesn't behave like a native app. It's not going to be as, for example, uh, responsive. It, will, it might have glitches or something like that, or glitches caused by the network. And that will make the user feel that your application is either buggy or just badly created and will drop its usage. Another thing is you shouldn't try to look as a native app, but you shouldn't try to make it look like a web page. Although it's HTML, there are better ways to do it as I just shown you before. Another thing, after creating your application, you should try to use it as much as possible. Test, test, test. And test like a real user. So you just use your fingers as if you are just pointing out stuff without wanting to do anything. So just swipe where you shouldn't swipe. Click where you couldn't clip, where you shouldn't clip. Clip twice. Clip with three fingers. Just try every option possible. A good example of this is Forecast.io. These guys did an amazing job with their web application. First of all, when you, start, when you try to use their application, um, when you access to, to their application through the browser of the, the mobile phone, the first thing that they tell you is that you have to install the application. Well, it's a web application. You don't have to install, right? But the users know that applications to run, they need to be installed. OK, so I need to install. And this one, oh, I just need to click on that button to install. And that little button is just going to add that web page to the home screen. And the users will now recognize that your web application is just like another application. Like I told you before, they didn't try to mimic neither a native app nor a website. So the users, when actually are using it, they just feel they are, they are using an application, an awesome application that is fast and that's it. So final thoughts. Mobile is here to stay and grow. More and more people are going to use their mobile devices in their daily life, in their work tasks. And mobile is a behavior. It's not about only about having, it's not only having a small screen. It's a completely behavior. You are on the move. So we should always have that in consideration. It can dramatically increase productivity. So imagine that yesterday, in Paulo's yesterday example, if the, if the nurses had uh, an application that would help them just clicking and checking, OK, this patient had already took his medicine. It would be much faster for them, for the nurses, to pass the information and much, fast, much faster on, the, the, on their daily life. So remember, minimize input, avoid cluttering, and choose the right use cases for your mobile application. Re use responsive web design 
only when it makes sense. It's great, and you should use it, but only when it makes sense. Whenever possible, of course, create specific mobile pages, because that will improve the user experience. Go mobile. It's a must nowadays, and you know why, and you know now how. Thankfully, I am for your presence. Here. Thank you, Ruben. Well, Ruben really went fast, so we have about 10 minutes for questions. So I hope you have a lot of questions. I have one there. Come on, don't be shy. Throw me your questions. Hello, my Hello. name is Joan. Uh, I would like uh, to ask you, when does it make sense to, to do a responsive website? OK. Um, as I told on the presentation, a good example are news sites. So content sites make sense to, to, to go um, to do responsive web design. Why? Because everything is content. And if you are on the site, it's because you want to see the content. You want to see the news, for example. A bad example, or a, an example where you shouldn't use responsive web designs, is in web applications. If you have forms, or if you are wanting the user to input data, responsive, the users are not going to input data in the same way as they input on the, on the desktop. So you shouldn't try to do the same thing on both devices. It's a completely different experience. Any other questions? Oh. Hi. Um, when you're creating a, a web application and when you were saying that you could publish them on the app stores and still using your own data and, no, and not relying on the user to update it, um, how do you manage, uh, like let's say, say images? Um, do you do you put the image on the on the application and just go and fetch the, all the texts, or do you rather have all the information on your side and every time that the user uses your application, goes and grabs all the information, the images, and all that stuff? Because I think that that is the kind of problem of the mo mo mobile. You get too much information to download, and in Portugal, you don't have that much with data plans that you can use and abuse. So if I understood correctly, our question was, in web applications, one of the problems is um, the, the images and everything, it has to be downloaded every time for the, for the device. And because of uh, limit, uh, limited data plans and so on, it can be bad for the users. Um, the answer to that is all of your images should actually be have an ex expiration date. This means that when it will only be downloaded to the, to the, to the, to the browser of the, of the mobile device one time. From that moment on, well, it will be cached on the device. As I told, you, told before, mobile devices and browsers on mobile devices are more and more advanced and following standards and so on. So they have the ability to actually to not request a given Content if they already require content image in this case. Um, there was another question here. Yes, um, in our region in, in the Middle East, that's where we're, we're operating. A lot of uh, issue concerning mobile applications is the localization of the application. Now, now native applications seem to provide great support to build, for example, Arabic applications that handle the display from right to left. Now you're promoting the hybrid and uh, the hybrid approach, for example, or tools like our systems. The problem is that catering for uh, issues like mirroring and having the UI appear properly right to left, is that part of the use cases that we can um, expect from our systems or is it something that we still have to tailor, we have to tinker around with CSS and, and the rest of the web uh, design tools? Well, uh, you are asking things about the platform. I think that I'm not completely the right person for, to answer that. However, I think that um, the platform does help you with creating application. That part of the mirror, for example, of the text being aligned to the left, I think it will still have to be done by CSS. The good part is that since you are doing in a web application, 
it will be probably easier to do it that way than actually doing it uh, on a native application. Because on a native application, you would have to do it every time that you would build or that you would deploy an application to a different uh, device, a different platform. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, uh, up there, the right side. Sean Santos, uh, just Hi. one quick question. Uh, do you think um, tablets, seven inches tablets and or 10 inches tablets should be uh, also treated as mobile and have a specific uh, interfaces or we can use the web, web uh, normal interfaces? Well, I think that um, the thing that we should have in mind at all time is how it's going to be used. So the tablet most probably is not going to be used on the desk. So it has the same problems as a uh, has a mobile has a smartphone. So if you has to if you have to input a lot of data, it will still be hard. It will be easier than on a smartphone. It will still be hard. Okay. So in that case, uh, I think that you should, if that's going to be a, a widely usage, the tablets. I think that you should have a specific uh, page or specific application for that. To so that the users can take most of your application that way. And fingers are fat, right? And fingers are fat, exactly. exactly. OK, any other questions? No? Well then, we're going to have a 30-minute break. Uh, please go out, talk to our sponsors, Mingle Network, and we'll see you all back here in half an hour to continue with the great abstract. Thank you so much.